Good evening, ma'am. Good evening, Akshaya. Akshaya, do you remember the question number we were discussing from the exercise 10.1? Uh, yes, ma'am. Third wrong letter. First one we have completed, ma'am. Question number three. First one we have completed. No, ma'am. Third one. Question. Third. Third one. Subdivision. First one we have completed, ma'am. Okay. Oh, this one, right? Okay. Did I give any homework from the same question? No, ma'am. I didn't give homework. No, ma'am. Okay. Please note down the subdivision too. Okay, ma'am. Subdivision two is f of x is equal to modulus of x square minus one at x is equal to one. So I have explained this, I guess, already, like how modulus works. So for the positive quadrant, for the positive values of x, it acts as positive. For the negative values of it, it acts as negative. Remember, so which is why you are multiplying x square minus 1 by minus, and x square minus 1 turned into 1 minus x square. Do you remember the continuous distribution? I hope you are able to see it here. Fine. Yes, ma'am. Yes, this part. So, this x square minus 1 act as positive for x greater than 1. And it act as negative for x is lesser than or equal to 0, which means when x is negative. I hope it is clear. So, this is how we will draw a continuous function. So, what do we have to do? You have to check the values for 1 from the right hand side and one from the left hand side, which means you're just going to approach one from left and right, from left and right, okay. So from right, it is considered as f dash of one plus and from the left, it is considered as f dash of one minus. Do you understand? So you're just going to approach this function from the left and right, okay. So what happens in the right side? So, in the right side, I hope you remember the first principle, okay? So, this is how you will write limit x approaches 1 plus f of x minus f of a upon x minus a. Remember the formula? Ah, yes, ma'am. Yes. So, you are just substituting the value of a as 1 here because in the question it is given as 1. Please tell me if you don't remember the formula, what is the formula? Limit x approaches a f of x minus f of a upon x minus a. Clear? This is just a first principle theorem. So, you're going to replace a with the 1 here. So, you know what is f of x and for 1 plus. For 1 plus means it is greater than 1, right? x square minus 1. So, you just have to substitute f of x as x square minus 1. For f of 1, what do you have to do? You just have to replace x as 1 and it becomes 1 square minus 1. 1 square is nothing but 1 only. So, 1 minus 1 is going to be 0. So, here you will have 0. Is it clear? Ah, yes, ma'am. Yes. So, now it's limit x approaches 1 plus x square minus 1 upon x minus 1. So, now you can rewrite 1 as 1 square. Now, if you look at the numerator, it acts like I mean, it looks like a square minus b, b square, which can also be written as a plus b into a minus b, which means limit x approaches 1 plus x minus 1 into x plus 1 upon x minus 1. Can you follow this? Ah, uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, I have just written the numerator as x minus 1 into x plus 1, okay? So, the numerator x minus 1 and the denominator x minus 1 will cancel out each other and you would be only left with limit x approaches 1 plus x plus 1. So, now you can substitute the value of x here which is 1 plus 1. So, that would give you the answer is 2. Is it clear? Ah, yes, ma'am. So, the answer for the right hand side is 2. 
Please note it down. They didn't mention it here. Note it down. Okay, ma'am. The answer is two. So now what if you are approaching from the left side? On the left side, we know the function becomes 1 minus x square, right? 1 minus x square means it's just 1 square minus x square, which can also be elaborated as 1 minus x into 1 plus x. So it's just limit x approaches 1 minus 1 minus x into 1 plus x upon x minus 1 you have already. Okay. So now what you can do to cancel the numerator and denominator from this part, partially, okay, from this part, you just take the minus sign outside. What happens? You will have x, limit x approaches 1 negative, minus of x minus 1, 1 plus x. The other things remains the same. The 1 plus x and the denominator x minus 1 remains the same. I'm just rewriting this as minus of x minus 1. Is it clear? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Why I'm doing it? Simply to make the cancellation. Just to cancel out the x minus 1 in the numerator and the denominator. So now you would be left with, now you would be left with limit x approaches 1 negative minus of 1 plus x. Okay. So now you just want to substitute x as 1 here. So that would become 1 plus 1, which will give you minus 2. So the answer is minus 2. Is it clear? Yes, ma'am. Yes. So now if you check your left-hand side answer and the right-hand side answer, they are different, right? They aren't equal. For the left-hand side, you got the answer is positive 2. For the right-hand side, you got the answer is negative 2. So they are not equal. So you're supposed to say the given function is not differentiable at x is equal to 1. Is it clear? Yes, ma'am. Is it clear, Akshaya? So that is how you will show. So, so how they are asking you the question? In the question, they are asking you to determine whether the given function is differentiable at the indicated values. That is the question. So the, the given question is f of x is equal to modulus of x square minus 1 at x is equal to 1. The very step, the very first step is to rewrite the given function in the form of a continuous distribution. Okay, so you're just splitting the function into two parts, one for the left side and one for the right side. Okay, and now you are checking, you are applying the first principle on the left hand side and right hand side individually. And you're checking whether the left hand side is equal to right hand side or not. If they are equal, you can say the given function is differentiable at x is equal to 1. If they are not equal, you have to say the given function is not differentiable at x is equal to 1. Is it clear? Is it clear, Akshaya? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So this question, in this question, they gave you two values, two indicated values. One is 0 and another one is 1. Okay. The given function is modulus of x plus modulus of x minus 1. So now you have to see when it acts as negative, when it acts as positive. Okay, so that you have to check. So let's check that. I'll teach you how to write the continuous distribution function first. So you do have modulus of x and modulus of x minus 1. So let's draw a rough graph. Okay, so here is your graph. Uh, here we can mark x as 0. And here you can mark x as 1. Okay. So, modulus of x plus x minus 1. So, modulus of x plus x minus 1. Let me rewrite this as y is equal to modulus of x plus x minus 1. Okay. When I substitute the value of x as 0, I will have modulus of 0, modulus of 0 minus 1, I will have Modulus of 0 is 0 plus minus 1. And again, modulus of mi minus 1 would be positive 1 only. So when I substitute the value of 0, I'm getting the answer as plus 1. When I substitute x as 0, I'm getting the answer as plus 1, which means it's 0 comma 1. Maybe for the value of y, I'll substitute 1 here. 
So I will assume this point as 0, 1. Okay. So when I substitute 1, what happens? I will have modulus of 1 plus modulus of 1 minus 1, modulus of 1, modulus of 0, modulus of 1 is 1 only, modulus of 0 will be 0, 1 plus 0 is also 1. So when I substitute the value of x, still I'm getting the answer is 1. So this point and this point. So now let's see, what if I substitute a negative value? What if I substitute values which is greater than 1? Any random value. Okay. So let me substitute x as negative 1. What happens? f of negative 1 means modulus of negative 1 plus modulus of negative 1, negative 1, positive 1 plus negative 2, positive 1, positive 2, 3. So, when you substitute negative 1, you are getting the answer is 3. Are you able to follow Akshaya? Uh, yes, ma'am. Yes. Please tell me if you are not able to follow, I will stop and explain. Okay. So, uh, when you substitute negative 1, you are getting the answer is positive 3. Right. Maybe I will mark y is equal to 2 here and y is equal to 3 here. So, when you substitute negative 1, you are getting the answer is negative 3 here. Negative 1 comma 3. So, this is for this. So, when you substitute some value with lesser than 0. Okay. So, what if you substitute a value which is greater than 1? What if I substitute 2? If I substitute 2, what happens to this? It becomes 2 modulus of 2 modulus of 2 minus 1. So, it's just 2. 2 plus 1 will get the answer as 3. So, you are getting 3 when I substitute so, let me assume here I do have x is equal to 2. So, when I substitute 2, I am getting the answer as 3 only. Maybe here it is 2 comma 3. This is, this is not mandatory to draw in the exam. I am just giving you a rough idea to draw a graph. If I connect all these points, so I will have a curve like this for this function. Is it clear? So, if you look at the curve, I don't have any graph which is downward. I don't have any graph lies in the third quadrant or fourth quadrant. I only have graph in the first quadrant and second quadrant. Do you understand the graph? Yes, ma'am. Do you understand? See, drawing the graph in the exam is not necessary. This is just a luxury. Okay, I just want you to understand how it works which is why I'm teaching you, okay? So, if you draw the graph for the given question, this is how the function will work, okay? Which means you're just going to approach the graph from your left-hand side and from your right-hand side, okay? So, that's what you're going to determine. You're just going to determine the slope of this function, you're just going to determine the slope of, which means you're just going to determine the changes occurring inside this function. Okay. So that is what we are going to find. All right. So x is lesser than 0. I've told you this part already. x is lesser than 0 means it is negative, isn't it? It is negative. So negative means I have told you this and this has to be multiplied with minus okay so you will have minus x plus of minus of x minus 1 which means it becomes minus x minus x plus 1 minus x and minus x can be simplified as minus 2x plus 1 so which can also be written as 1 minus 2x do you understand this part oh, yes ma'am yes So, between 0 and 1, between 0 and 1, they are saying that it only acts as 1. What does it mean? 0 lesser than or equal to x, lesser than or equal to 1, which means 
you try to substitute x as 0, what you will get? When you substituted x as 0, you got the answer as 1, isn't it? Remember, yes. when we substituted yes, x as 0, you got the answer as 1. one. So which is why you have 1 here. And when you substituted x as 1, remember, when you substituted yes, x as 1, still you got the answer as 1 only. One. Remember? So which is why yes, you don't sir. have 1 here. I hope you understand the condition 1 and condition 2. Is it clear? Uh, yes, ma'am. Just a basic substitution. Okay. And in the third one, I have told you this. This is greater than zero, which means it will act as positive only. So it's just going to be plus x plus x minus one, which is 2x minus one. Is it clear? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. I hope it is clear. So this is how you will write the continuous distribution function. So now you have to see what if f of 1 plus, what is f dash of 1 minus? Okay, you have to see this. And also you have to check for 0. What is f dash of 0 plus? What is f dash of 0 minus? So you will do it twice. Okay, I will show you how does it work f dash of 0 plus f dash of 0 minus. Meaning is, you are just approaching this x is equal to 0. You are just approaching the function from left hand side. Mean you will just approach like this. From right hand side, 0 plus means you will approach like this. Is it clear? You will try yes, to you will try to observe this x is equal to zero more and more closer to x is equal to zero, but it is not exactly zero. That is what it means. Zero plus means somewhere you are uh, very next to the zero, but it is on your on the right hand side part of the zero. F dash of zero minus means you are very closer to zero. You are watching the zero from the left hand side but you are not at zero is it clear is it clear dear ah yes ma'am yes so now let's go on to the first principle theorem and make the substitution you know how first principle theorem works so it's just limit x approaches a f of x minus f of a upon x minus a so here you do have 0, simply replace x as, I mean, the value of a as 0 here. Okay. So f of x for 0 plus, 0 plus means greater than 0, isn't it? What is greater than 0? Positive digit. No, for greater than 0 means which part of the function will act? 1 minus 2x, 2x minus 1 or 1? 2, 2x minus 1. 2x minus 1 is for x greater than 1. It is for x greater than 1. Okay. If it is if it is x greater than 1, it is uh, greater than 0 also, no ma'am. If it is greater than 1, it is greater it than 0 greater also. Than zero also See, the meaning is x is equal to greater than 1 means the function started acting like 2x minus 1. That's what it means. If it is greater than 0 means it, it doesn't mean it is also greater than 1. This is how you should see. Greater okay. than f of x greater than 0. That is okay. What you are saying is correct only. But it doesn't have to be greater than 1. Okay. Maybe, may, maybe it is lesser than 1. There is a chance that it could be lesser than 1. But definitely we can't say it, it might be greater than 1. So this is the more appropriate function. 
okay ma'am okay okay ma'am so for f of x you will get the answer as 1 only and for f of 0 when you substituted 0 in this you got the answer as 1 so you will still substitute 1 x minus 0 is x 0 upon x 0 by anything will give you the answer as 0 only so you will have 0 as the result for the first part is it clear ah, yes ma'am yes and for the second part they are saying that f is lesser than 0 lesser than 0 means obviously the first condition isn't it 1 minus 2x so you will just substitute f of x is 1 minus 2x in this and f of 0 when you substituted 0 in this you will get the answer as 1 is it clear yes ma'am please tell me if you don't get it i will explain again akshaya don't hesitate to ask me now So, when you simplify this 1 and negative 1 will cancel out each other, you will be left with minus 2x in the numerator and x in the denominator. Cancel out the x in the numerator and the denominator you will have negative 2. Is it clear? Yes, ma'am. Yes. So, from that you have to say the given value is not equal. So, they are not differentiated. Sometimes the students used to do this. They will say they are not differentiable at x is equal to 0. They will write this also. Sometimes they will make some mistake in finding the value or in some simplifying the value. Okay. And they will still argue for the marks that they should give because they have uh, got the exact answer. Still, you have missed some part in the steps, but they won't give marks for, for that, even though if your final answer is correct. Okay. Please don't make any silly mistakes when you do simplification. Be careful with that. So, for the f of 0 part, we are done. Now, we have to solve f of 1 part. f dash of 1 plus f dash of 1 minus. So, 1 plus 1 minus. What does it mean? 1 plus means it is greater than 1. Greater than 1 means it's 2x minus 1. Isn't it, Akshaya? So, you have to replace f of x as 2x minus 1. Is it clear? Yes, ma'am. Yes. So, for f of 1, what do you do? You just have to substitute the value of 1 because you got 1 only for that. So, in the denominator, you will have x minus 1. And when you simplify negative 1, negative 1, you will get negative 2. It's going to be 2x negative 2 upon x minus 1. So, take the 2 outside, you'll be having x minus 1 upon x minus 1. x minus 1 and x minus 1 will cancel out each other. You'll be having the answer is 2. Actually, supposed to be positive 2. Here, they have put it as negative 2. This is wrong. Is it clear? Supposed to be positive 2, Akshaya. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma For the next part, 1 minus. 1 minus means it's lesser than 1. See, for this also, lesser than 1 means it is lesser than 1. But not necessarily lesser than 0. Okay. So, you will take 1 only for that. Do you understand how this works? Yes, ma'am. Lesser than 1 means you will consider substituting 1 only for f of x. You will not substitute x lesser than 0 condition. Okay. So, now for f of x, you will substitute 1. And for f of 1 also, you know already you do have 1. So, 1 minus 1 is going to be 0. It's 0 upon x minus 1. 0 by anything will give you 0 only. It's just 0. So, if you look at the left side, you got the answer as positive 2. On the right side, you got the, I mean, for the right side, you got the answer as positive 2. For the left side, you got the answer as plus 0. I mean, 0. They are different. So, it is not differentiable at x is equal to 1. Is it clear? Yes, ma'am. Yes. So, when they gave you two values, Akshaya, remember, you have to do it twice. Understood? Yes, ma'am. For sin x, one minute, actually, I want to share this video. I've made this video once on the sin x function, how sin x works. <clears throat> I just want you to see. <coughs> Excuse me.
Okay. This is my recording only. Okay. You can see it. You must have uh, heard this formula. Differentiation of sin x is cos x. Differentiation of cos x is sin x. Heard it. Ever heard it before? Yes, ma'am. What Hello everyone, welcome to Math to Infinity. F dash of X. So Akshaya, you know Tamil, right? Okay. First principle theorem use pani nama sin x abdi cos x achin pakla. First principle theorem abdina inana f dash of x is equal to Limit h approaches 0, f of x plus h minus f of x whole upon h. Even the h approaches 0, so meaning h tends to 0. That is why you have a number line. The number line is 0. In the pocket, 1, 2, this is positive values. And if you have a left hand side, you have negative values. If h approaches 0, what is the meaning? If 0, you uh, left hand side and no, right hand side. No, approach pandra, abdi, meaning. That is, you can the right approach in this way. That is, you in the right no, approach in this approach in the limits and uh, differentiation, la na, and the 0 is close to value. 0 is close to values, abdi, na, like 0 0.01, 0. 001, 0 0.0001. It can be rumba rumba decimal values are go. close up in the approach pondo. But meaning in an other zero kadaya. Other zero kadaya. Then a zero was substitute pana mudia. But on the h approaches zero and potana, zero ka pakatla ingio recover value abdin meaning. Other zero point zero one are class, zero point zero zero one are class, zero point zero one one abir class. Ade mother negative la pakombo. Minus 0 0.1, minus 0 0.01, minus 0 0.001. And the madri, 0 ka rumba pakatler ka or negative value a irko, but other 0 kadia. Now if h equal to 0 potena, other 0 nato. But h tends to 0 and potena, other meaning 0 kadia, but 0 ka pakatler ka value, other one the right hand side learn the approach panade, illa left hand side learn the approach panade, updating meaning. All right. So, now we the first principle theorem. We will use sin x and cos x. Differentiation. Because f dash of x is f of x differentiate f dash of x. One dash denote one more differentiate. In case we have power left, we dash put one more differentiate. We will do so, if you have f dash of x, you will differentiate the So, limit h tends to 0. h approaches 0. f of x plus h. f of x plus h is the function of x in terms of x plus h. 
So f of x and I pen and panaporana f of x plus h in the pora. So sin x is going to be sin of x plus h. And here you do have f of x. So anga apriya sin x nirka pode and hold upon h in the variable h abde irka pode. So now I'm going to write limit h approaches zero f of x plus h is sin of x plus h minus f of x. What is f of x? The question is sin x. So that would be sin x ni eldunga hold upon. Let me draw a decent straight line. Yeah. So upon h. All right. So ipa nama in the first principle theorem la substitution step nama panni achi. Aduthu nama enna panna porona idha further simplify panna porom. Simplify pandrathukku munnadi you take a close look at this. Inge paarenga sin of x plus h இது நமக்கு என்ன ரிமைண்ட் பண்ணுது அப்படின்னா ட்ரிக்னாமெட்ரியில சைன் ஏ பிளஸ் பின்னு ஒரு ஃபார்முலா இருக்கு சைன் ஆஃப் ஏ பிளஸ் பி அது வந்து என்ன ஃபார்முலானா சைன் ஏ காஸ் பி பிளஸ் காஸ் ஏ சைன் பி அப்படின்னு ஒரு ஃபார்முலா வரும் ஸோ அந்த ஃபார்முலாவை இங்க நம்ம அப்ளை பண்ண போறோம் cos b sum of terms to product of terms abindra formula varu sin a cos b plus cos a sin b idu trigonometry la indha formula neenga padichirpinga so idha na use panna porom inge vandha a abindrathu pathina x b vandha pathina h so a is x and b is h ipo idha na substitute pannum bodhu enakku sin x cos h plus cos x sin h nu kadaikum So, in the formula, I will write this formula. I hope you are able to follow. I will write this formula. So, at the end, the limit h approaches 0. That is the same. If you have h less 0 and substitute, you have to write this formula. That is the same problem. Okay. So, sin of x plus h. What is sin of x plus h? So, it is sin x cos h plus cos x sin h minus sin x. In here, the minus sin x one, then I'll be able to do it again. Right? And hold upon h. So, on the h, I'll be able to do it again. So, straight line. So, I'm going to do it again. H. All right. So, if I do it again, further, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to erase these. So, if in the sin x plus cos h uh, plus cos x sin h minus sin x are being written. So, in the bracket, I remove because the addition is not there. So, you can remove the bracket. If I remove the bracket, I will rearrange it. So, I will do this. Sin x is going to be cos x sin h. Now, what is the formula? Sin x is going to be cos x sin h. Now, what is the formula? Sin x is going to be cos x sin h. Now, what is the formula? Sin x is going to be cos x sin h. Just rearrange it. Now, I will do a partition. So in the step of the limit h tends to 0 sin x cos h now in the sin x minus sin x plus cos x sin h whole upon h right. So in the first two term sin x cos h minus sin x have been written. So, what do you think about this? Sin x is common. Here is sin x, here is sin x. So, I am going to take out sin x. Sin x is common. Sin x is common. Sin x is common. So, I am going to take out sin x as the common term. So, sin x is common. So, sin x is common. You will be left with cos h minus 1 plus cos x sin h whole upon whole upon h. So, if you look at the h, this is the common denominator. So, I can split that. Now, I will split it. I will write a fraction. And if you look at the limit, this is sin x cos h minus 1 and cos x sin h. These two are common. So, I will split it. So, I am going to split that. Limit h tends to 0 sin x cos h minus 1 upon h plus 
limit h approach is zero cos x sin h divided by h ipo a plus b divided by c appdin irundha a by c plus b by c nu eludhum illaya andha madiri na in the whole upon appindrathu na pirichu eludhiruken avladha all right so now i'm going to take the uh, sin x outside because in the limit vandu pathinga na h la dhaan vandu zero aagudhu right so h term ah mattu vechukonga indha x term la konja velila eludiralam okay so ipo na enna panna pora na sin x ah andha limit ku munnadi eludittu andha meedi irukka limit appdi eludikonga limit h tends to zero so cos h minus 1 upon h inge irundha indha sin x into cos h minus 1 la sin x ah na munnadi eludirken avladha thus இப்போ அதே மாதிரி இங்க பாத்தீங்கன்னா எக்ஸ் டேம் அப்படின்றது காஸ் எக்ஸ் சோ காஸ் எக்ஸ் நான் முன்னாடி எழுதுறேன் காஸ் எக்ஸ் எழுதிட்டு லிமிட் ஹெச் டென்ஸ் டு ஜீரோ சைன் ஹெச் அப்பான் ஹெச் எழுதிட்டேன் எழுதிக்கோங்க <laughs> cos 0 minus 1 upon 0 அப்படி வரும் plus in the cos x limit h tends to 0 sin h upon h இங்க நான் 0 னு சப்ஸ்டிட்யூட் பண்ணல அது ஏன்னு நான் சொல்றேன் இங்க இந்த இந்த ஸ்டெப் பண்ணவேனா இந்த ஸ்டெப்ல மட்டும் நீங்க 0 னு சப்ஸ்டிட்யூட் பண்ணுங்க இத நாம இன்னும் further expand பண்ணனும் all right so cos 0 minus 1 cos 0 degree oda value ungalkey theriyum cos 0 appadina 1 appadina artham right so appa na enna pannalana cos 0 vana 1 nu substitute panna pora so appadi edikonga sin x sin x cos 0 oda value vandu pathina 1 inge clear a irudhen thoda jam a irudhen all right so sin x cos 0 oda value pathina 1 and you have minus 1 here minus 1 upon 0 plus cos x limit h tends to 0 sin h upon h so 1 minus 1 appadina 0 illa so 0 by 0 0 da neenga 0 va innu further divide pannanum na 0 vala divide pandradendrathu mudiyave mudiyada oru karyam so appa 0 divided by 0 and sin x into 0 is obviously 0 so appa indha part mottham ungalku 0 va idum all right so cos x limit h tends to 0 sin h by h okay so ipo actually na enna panna pora cos x nu varavekka pora adu eppadi varavekkiradu endradha evlo steps so ipo indha step mottham ungalku 1 nu aagum idu or formula irukku continuity and differentiability la l hospital rules padi limit h tends to 0 sin h by h equal to 1 appdi varum adu eppadi na solren இப்போ இந்த ஒன்னொனுக்கு நீங்க டைலர் சீரிஸ் னு ஒன்னு படிச்சிருப்பீங்க ஓகே சோ இப்போ இந்த sin h ஓட டைலர் சீரிஸ் டைலர் சீரிஸ் பார்ட் யூ டோன்ட் ஹேவ் டு see it because otherwise it will go for a while okay so uh, you for now you just remember that limit x approaches 0 sin h by h is going to be 1 okay so it's cos x times 1 cos x times 1 will give you cos x only so that is how differentiation of sin x will give you the answer as cos 